Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. And my name is Noel McVoy, and it is Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. And as you yes. see from just the two of us, ASF has the morning off. Yep. The it buses is awesome. ain't the buses aren't ain't aren't not not no not running today. It's also Veterans Day, so we want to give a warm yes. thank you to all of our veterans out there for the service that you guys mm-hmm. have provided our country. Yes, and I have a veteran art clip later in the show that will show between events with Noel McAvoy, along with uh, we have a special guest on today, and they're talking about the the American Piano Quartet, and so Chris Hahn from the uh, University of Montana, professor of piano, will be on here talking <laughs> all about that, um, and it's going to be uh, on Wednesday night, but of course he'll talk more about it and what you guys can expect later in the show. But of course, the weather, it's oh. all foggy and stuff outside, it, but of course really there foggy. is an official uh, fog advisory warning until 11 a.m., although it's just kind of like... Well, what is a fog advisory warning? It's like, hey guys, guess what? There's going to be fog until 11 a.m. It's like, thanks for the advisory. So anyways, <laughs> here is um, the weather. It is currently 29 degrees outside. Uh, you have dense fog happening. So just be a little bit careful when you're going into work today and um, just driving around, picking up stuff. But of course, it's going to keep the heat in and you're going to have a high of 58 degrees today. It's going to be mostly sunny. So it's going to be a very warm and nice Veterans Day for your fall, but of course through the weekend you can expect to rain with a 20% chance of rain and basically happening on the peak night. So of course if you if you plan on going out tonight, uh, be safe and drink responsibly or if you don't drink, um, <laughs> Drive be responsible. responsibly, walk responsibly, just be responsible out there yeah. you guys. Yeah, be responsible with your drinking friends. And hopefully it won't be too foggy, but when I left my house this morning, it was very eerie and yeah. really weird. And I, like, you know, could have played some scary music and made a horror film right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, uh, I have city council today, and oh, uh, we're going to be talking about just what the heck the um, city of Missoula is doing with the Fox Triangle. So they have the architecture, they have CTA, which is the architecture firm. They're going to be talking about what they're doing with the Fox um, Triangle. Even if you guys don't know where that is, it's, you know, that, you know it's between... Um, I guess the best way of saying is Taco John's and Orange Street. You know, that the long stretch of area in which they're going to be building a whole bunch of stuff. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show for my city council report, which is at the tail end. We have Teen Talk, which is going to be talking about the reaction of this um, election. That oh, happened. good. So, reaction uh, from the teens. A reaction from the teens. They're always very insightful. <laughs> Insightful teens. But of course, if you nice. want to find out more information, go to nationalweatherservice.gov or, or you can log on to our website to find out more about us by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. We also have a Facebook page. You can like us on that. And to find out more information about us or just to catch us live, go to MCAT.org. And of course, of course, uh, tomorrow is our Saturday uh, stop animation drop-in. So if you have a kid between the ages of 9 and 13, or you have some kids who are a little young but are still kind of mature. We've got some 6-year-olds, some 8-year-olds that are actually doing a really, really good yes. job. We, 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 it's like a test. But, of course, it siblings like are always great as well if you have mm-hmm. like an older sibling and a younger sibling. But it, it's $10 per drop-in. And, of course, if you're just kind of trying to try it out, it's $5 for a half day. If you just kind of want to experience it, it's kind of be like, I want to, you know, like, ch- see it and see what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes we do some live action breakouts. So we do some live action um, movies. So kids get a first hand experience on how to make a stop animation film and films in general. So yes, that's right. just a little bit of plugging there. Uh, we do have a bunch of brand new programs on for today as well. So I'm going to show you a little bit of teases for your weekend of programs, starting with the Montana Book Festival. So when we come back, we'll have Chris Hahn from the uh, University of Montana um, Piano Department. So I'm sorry to my friends, family, and wife. I've misled all of you just so I could use the woman's restroom. And I would have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for those meddling lawmakers. It's time to pack up my dresses and makeup and donate them to some worthy cause. It's time to stop taking my hormones. It's time to return to life as a man. Sincerely, Steve. (laughs) I'm Tori Barron. I'm transitioning um, trans woman from Helena kind of on the world's longest, weirdest road trip from Hawaii to New York. Ooh, who put a listing of snowshoes as one of our 
awesome internal testers. <laughs> so getting it off the laptop onto an actual phone was a big piece, but yeah. it looks really cool on the phone, which is probably my favorite part, is getting it up in the Having it in your hands is really cool, so. Is GearBubble actually on the App Store? We've submitted it to the App Store, but we haven't heard back yet. It's a, it's a longer process than we thought originally, so, yeah. There is, a, um, under the Peace Corps volunteer opportunities, anytime you click on any of those volunteer opportunities, it will show whether they accept couples. And you can even, there's a great filtering where you can filter it by region or by work. You, know, you can look for only health jobs in Latin America that accept couples. <laughs> In 1976 to 81, the prison struggle, particularly in the north of Ireland, but concurrently overshadowed by that in the prisons in England, is very significant. There may be some people here who know this. Many of you will have heard about the 1981 hunger strike when, when 10 IRA and INLA prisoners uh, died in the H blocks in Lankesh, aka the maze. That's the British term for it. <clears throat> Hey guys, we're here with Chris Hahn, and he's here to talk about the American Piano Quartet. Absolutely. So please tell us, uh, what can people expect from um, what's going on? Absolutely. Well, this is our uh, second big concert in the Celebrate Piano series at the School of Music. Um, and we bring in a guest artist. We bring in actually three guest artists every year. We also have our big Pianissimo event, which happened in October to great success. So in November, we like to bring in a guest, um, and we put them in the Denison Theater, which is a huge venue, of course. Most of our other events are in the recital hall. So we're talking 1,100 seats, so I'll buy your tickets. Um, <laughs> but um, at the, so we bring in these, these great artists. We had Anderson and Rowe two years ago and just had just resounding success. Phil Auberg last year, phenomenal Montana pianist. And then this year we have the American Piano Quartet. So we literally have two grand pianos on stage, um, four pianists, so we have eight hands going crazy. Um, and these guys are really the preeminent ensemble of that makeup, of that genre. And uh, they've had works written for them. They've really um, sort of created the genre within it. Uh, so they've continued to add pieces to it. And nobody does it better. So uh, it's electric, it's exciting. These guys are supreme and <clears throat> really sublime pianists, all, all four of them. And where are they coming from? It's a great question. They actually are local. They live, well, they live in, uh, one of them is at Boise State University, and the other three teach at Brigham Young in Provo. Oh, they're so they're actually regional, mm -hmm. but they're international. You know, so it just so happens. And we're friends with um, Del Parkinson um, is a good friend. And then Jeffrey Shumway is one of the other pianists. And <clears throat> I've gotten to know him. He actually, his wife lives in Corvallis and her family. So this is sort of like coming home for him. He's a dynamite pianist, great arranger and, and musician um, and composer. We did some of his works at Pianissimo this year. Mm -hmm. So, and so all of their works, are they going to be original pieces? Uh, they are not. Some of them are written for them. They okay. have a, um, a fantasy on uh, the theme is from Carmen, that phenomenal opera. Mm -hmm. Really great, yeah, a great, great arrangement. They also have a Scott Joplin uh, Rhapsody, uh, you know, sort of a, a mashup, if you will, any, uh, also uh, written for them. Any Bach? You know, there's no Bach. Ooh. There's no Bach. But there's some list, you know, Franz Liszt, that phenomenal, you know, pianist rock star from the 1800s, you know. Uh, so what he could do with one piano requires, you know, four pianists to do with two pianos anymore, but um, something like that. So, um, but this is a great event, and we love our November event because it's also when we bring in our uh, children. Oh, and uh, so we try to do a lot of community outreach with Celebrate Piano Series, the Downtown Pianos is kind of part of what we do with the Keyboard Society and, and all of that. And so um, we bring in, through our own connections and reaching out to schools, um, uh, 900 school children wow. for a concert on Tuesday morning at 10.30. <clears throat> and these are from outlying Missoula schools. I mean, we do get Hellgate Elementary because mm -hmm. they're not in MCPS. MCPS kind of offers enough things to their yeah. kids, you know, yeah. through the SPARK program and such. So we're really quite happy to go out and offer other things. So we have Arlie and Superior and Ronan, Polson. Mm -hmm. 
So we really try to go to a really broad array, and they're thrilled to come. It's their third year being invited, and so we're just thrilled to offer this to them. Um, so that's on Tuesday at 10.30, and that's kind of a kind of a private yeah, event. Yeah, kind of a private event, but they love it, and these guys are ready to do a, a, a bang-up children's show. They're thrilled to do it. And then Wednesday night will just be phenomenal. I mean, it'll be an amazing display of, of artistry, pianism, fun, great music. Uh, four pian you know, two pianos, four pianos, that, that can really start to sound like and a And so symphony, they just like you know? sit right next to each other. They right? literally do. Yeah, it's literally like two people playing duets, but times two, you know, yes. uh, you know, you know a duet times two. So, so how much are tickets? So this is part of our Keyboard Society, okay. uh, which w actually won a national award last year for our uh, the activities that we do. So it, everything's a fundraiser. It all goes back into the into the pot, and that all goes to help our students with their activities. Um, uh, general admission is 25. Okay. Uh, seniors are 20. And students, who I really want to encourage, you know, to come uh, to hear it and get inspired, uh, those are ten. Awesome. Okay. So, yeah. so who do you? What do you hope that people take away from mm. this concert, and also the kids? <clears throat> you know, I guess in general, the Celebrate Piano series we created it started it up five years ago to just bring really great artists, sometimes our dear friends as well, to Missoula, mm -hmm. to just sort of show that the piano is vibrant, it's vital. It's, I mean, of course I'm biased, but it's, it's the greatest <laughs> instrument. You literally can be a symphony with two people, you know, at a mm -hmm. piano. Um, and so, I, I, what do I want people to take away from? Just that piano is alive and well. I guess I have this vision in my mind, you know, along with the downtown pianos that, you know, sort of Missoula becomes sort of Piano USA or something, mm -hmm. you know, Piano Town USA. That's, a, that's <laughs> sort of a private dream. But, um, you know what I mean? Just so people just are in, in, uh, enthused by it, yeah. enthralled by it. Um, and that they just really kind of get into it and go, yeah, that is awesome. And if there's students who are studying piano, they are encouraged. If students want to study piano or are thinking about it, why not? And for those parents, lots of people have played the piano in their day. If I had a nickel for the number of people that said, ah, oh, if only my, my parents didn't let me quit. Yeah. It's yeah. always on the parents. Yep, it's it really the is. Not <laughs> Believe me, never did the parents come to the student who was practicing hard and say, you know what, Billy, it's time to quit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I think it, No uh, son of mine is playing piano. That's it. You're off. Get back out on that playing field. So I think if we, um, I think that, I think that's really what it is. I think it's just getting the parents inspired and, and maybe recalling a time when they were playing and they were like, you know, gosh, I really wish I could play. The really great news is, is my own private studio is as healthy as it's been in my 13 years here. I've got, so it's happening, you know, and my colleagues in town who teach, they all have very robust studios. So there's a lot of good things going on in this town, and we just want to support that. And so are there different styles of piano playing? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so what's your favorite style? <laughs> oh, geez, here we go. Um, when people ask me my favorite composer, it's Beethoven. You know, my favorite piano style, I got to say, one thing that I always counted myself, I feel like it's who I am today and why it is, and it's who I was then. I was always about diversity. I was always about experience. Mm -hmm. So I never said no to anything. Okay. You want to play for the choir? Sure. Do you want to play in the jazz band? Absolutely. I had a rock and roll band in high school, you know, playing in bars when I was 16, you know, this kind of thing. Um, whatever it takes, playing for musicals, playing for Broadway, playing for whatever, um, playing in orchestras, you know, I play piano with the Missoula Symphony. So, whatever it takes, I have a favorite style, depends on the day. Okay. If I'm driving in my car, it's probably, you know, some rockabilly, you know, Billy Joel was one of my, speaking of Billy, you know, <laughs> Billy Joel was really one of my favorites growing up. I really count playing his music as a young student as what really helped my sight reading. Awesome. It's really what allowed me to become a better, uh, very proficient sight reader. Because I knew the tunes and I wanted to be Billy Joel ultimately. So, <laughs> uh, Elton John, yes, it? Bruce yeah. Hornsby, phenomenal. You know, John Legend, beautiful style. You know, awesome. Alicia Keys, great work, you know. I love um, it. Whatever, you know, it's kind of like picking my favorite of my four children, you know? Yeah, yeah. You better not have an answer, yeah. I guess, is sort of the right response. Yeah. So, um, one more time, let's uh, mm -hmm. let's pitch it and Absolutely. where can people find more information? Fantastic. So, the concert is next Wednesday, November 16th at 7.30 p.m. It's in the Denison Theater. Uh, you can get tickets at the box office, 243-4581. Uh, Grizz Ticks is a nice way to go, uh, getting into the modern age, so online, umt.edu slash grizzticks. You can find the Celebrate Piano uh, series tile and click through. Uh, you can get them at the night of the show at the Denison Theater as well. Um, so those are sort of the pertinent, that's the pertinent stuff, I think. Okay. Uh, Thank absolutely. you very much. My pleasure, you guys. Great to meet you. Is there anything else you want to let us know before we let you go? I think that's it. Just come and support piano in Missoula. It's a great thing, and, and we would like to offer this for you. Uh, to you, for you, and hopefully uh, you 
you know, people celebrate yeah. it and enjoy it like we do. Awesome. Right. Great. Yeah. Well, great thanks. Picture. Thanks, guys. Great to see you. We'll be right back after this, everyone. At Missoula Aging Services, you'll always be greeted with a warm welcome. Whether you are caring for an aging loved one or you're an older adult yourself, our friendly staff is ready to connect you to the help you need. You will always get unbiased advice, a free assessment of your needs, and personalized information about the resources available. See what we can do for you. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. For too long, corporate tobacco has exploited our people, manipulated our practices, and profited from our addiction. No more. If you struggle with commercial tobacco addiction, call the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Quit Line today at 1-855-372-0037 and talk to someone who understands. Hi hey guys, guys. <laughs> welcome back to Wake Up Missoula. I just noticed that like when I was like looking at the screen, it's like you're really like we're like way over here. We're just like still acting. And then like I it's... pressed the button before Scott could press the button, so it threw him off. So he was like, ah. No, it wasn't about the button, it was just like we're positioned. It was about the button. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I know, whenever ASAP is in here, it throws me off so much because there's all this space behind us. So I'm just like Yeah, there's a lot of space. I'm like, there's so much space behind us, like right now. It's too it's, much. It's ridiculous. It, it's so it's so crazy how like you know, pianos are big. <laughs> pianos are big. <laughs> but of course, you know, once again, I want to thank Chris Hahn for joining us this morning. Uh, if you guys want to check out uh, the Piano Celebrate Piano series, just log on to the University of Montana website. But of course, you can always Google Celebrate Piano Missoula, and then it basically shows you all the links that you need to know about it. So things are happening. Things are happening. So the things that are happening I'm talking about are local in Missoula. So we've got more news on the mercantile, and the mercantile is in the newspaper oh. today. So Preserve Historic Missoula has been seeking to halt the Bozeman developer from obtaining a demolition permit and deconstructing most of the Merc to replace it with a five-story Marriott hotel with a ground floor restaurant space. So, um, the attorneys for the owner of Historic Missoula Mercantile Building, people, the so Preserve Historic Missoula have been trying to go forth with a lawsuit against them. And so the attorneys have been saying, this they quote, saying an effort to block a $35 million hotel in downtown Missoula is based on nothing more than fanciful conjecture and guesswork. Which I thought that was dramatic. And kind well, of I mean, like, I, I was wondering, like, how long they were going to take to actually say it, because it, yeah. it totally encompasses what's going on, for yeah. sure. In, in their own opinion, yes, I understand that uh, a lot of people, like the Preserve Historic Missoula, they have very strong principles about preserving they a do. lot of things that are in downtown yeah. Missoula, but at the same time, um, are we gonna just keep on preserving an empty building that can't be it's, used? That's, that's exactly what they're that, saying. That's, that's too uh, like if people do buy the new building and mm -hmm. want to preserve it, it, it's more of a liability than it is an asset. So that's exactly what they're saying. So the pharmacy portion of the building has to be saved per an agreement with the city, but the build and the building is also listed on the natu National Register of Historic Places. The preservation group argues in a news brief that the Missoula City Council's decision to overturn the Historic Preservation Commission. A denial of a demolition permit was an abuse of discretion. But I, the um, lawyers are saying that um, the findings were not granted um, because that the, this was all part of a downtown master plan and so the city council went through everything thoroughly and have given these lawyers permission to do this and are allowing them to do this. But the lawyers keep saying that if these people are trying to block this then maybe the lawsuit, you know, the entire thing will go, uh, will, won't even happen and that the building will sit, will sit vacant for much longer. Well, I, I, unfortunately, like, I actually talked to one of the uh, Preserve Historic Museum, oh, yeah, and I was saying, um, hey, why don't you just guys talk to the people at Target Range, because, you know, they've been keeping the McClay Bridge out there for 25, 30 years, yeah. even though they were trying to tear that bridge down and build a new one. It's mm -hmm. like, why don't you just talk to them? And it's like, that's, hmm. It's pretty smart, yeah. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel as though so, it's going to be like a Missoula's downtown McClay Bridge. Because if you guys don't know the story about McClay Bridge, it's a bridge, it's a one-lane bridge that's on, um, it's basically the halfway point, um, but entryway to Blue Mountain. Mm -hmm. And it's a one-way bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, really, it's like really uh, sketchy for sure, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never and been those, there. And but... the people on the target range have been saying no, no, no. And they've been finding ways to basically delay any kind of new bridge that will be made on South um, Avenue. But of course, this is 
or this is just all the kind of stuff that has been going on. It's true, yeah. And so I'm not quite sure how people, how the you know historic preservation committee has gotten involved with McClay Bridge, but they're really involved with the mercantile. And so the lawyers for uh, this person that owns this has been saying that this lawsuit could block it. And actually, the a uh, transaction of like 3.5 million dollars were but was going to go yes. through, but the lawsuit blocked it again. So I can imagine that it's adding a whole bunch of stress to people. But as for now, the Merc is still in regular condition downtown and uh yeah city council will update on us on that and but of course as you guys already know that um the mcps cold springs uh um was passed you know like they did a um they did a uh what was that called uh they put it in the uh election the ballot it was a ballot initiative and they approved it and now in the news. And now, so in the news, the uh, trustees approved a and &E architects to just start designing the new Cold Spring School. The voters okay me in the district will buy eight acres of a 100-acre lot owned by Wilbur and Shauna Ginter. They estimated 50,000 square foot, 11.1 million school, will be located on Big Fork Road, northwest of the intersection with Lower Miller Creek Road. So the land was appraised at $570,000, and the school bought it for $500,000. Wow. And they haven't decided what to do with the old school or other vacant district buildings or the property, but they hope to have students in a new school by August 2018. Yeah, so we'll look forward to that. You know, of course, you'll just check in your newspaper for updates on that. And then my last news story, which uh, I guess is very disconcerting, and I was really, really glad that I graduated from the University of Montana when I did, and I know that Scott is too. Mm -hmm. um, so as of on September 23rd, the University of Montana released its enrollment numbers for fall 2016, with which demonstrate more than ever that enrollment at UM is dropping sharply for the sixth consecutive year. Since 2010, the University of Montana has suffered an enrollment decline of nearly 24% from 15,000 students to now 10,000. Um, so the number of full-time equivalent undergraduates at UM is an 8% drop from fall of 2015. UM's incoming freshman class on the main campus has shrunk over 9%. Um, and the first-time resident freshman has also decreased by 17.2%. Um, and then also, the first-time uh, international freshman student number has decreased by nearly 30%. Mm -hmm. And the full-time equivalent at Missoula College has also dropped a 9.5% decline from last year. Um, and so one of the results of this devastating decline is that in the academic 2016-2017 year, UM is proposing a general fund budget of $149.8 million, which is a decrease of 2.69% uh, from last year, so pretty much a 3% decrease from last year. They're saying that it is because of the budget, but I mean, we all really know what it is, is those allegations that have happened throughout the years, sexual assault allegations. Um, and so that is a really big bummer, but as the University of Montana decreases and kind of loses its standing, uh, Montana State University in Bozeman is on track to set a new enrollment record of 16,400 students for fall 16. They're also hiring seven more professors, 114 more classified and hourly employees, and 21 more professional employees. Um, they Even in the number of Native American and international students enrolled, they had two categories. Hey, they set a new record of 650 Native American students and 717 foreign students, so pretty much an, a 12% increase from 2015. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, because of the way that the University of Montana has handled all of these allegations, has really handled the way that they run the university, they're seeing a decline in students, which also means a decline in funding, which also means a decline in education. So it's really, really sad. And I'm all really glad that I got out when I did. And I'm very disappointed in the University of Montana. So hopefully they won't go under within the next 10 years and they can have some redeeming qualities. Yes, but my opinions do not reflect the city of Missoula, the University of Montana, or the Missoula Community Access Television, or Wake Up Missoula, or Charter Communications. They're my own opinions. Cool. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> so up next, we've got some events going on for you guys. So it is Friday. And so we've got, today's Veterans Day, and so kids, <laughs> and so school's out for lots of children all over Missoula. Um, and so starting at 9 a.m. over the Missoula Butterfly House, they've got their school's out bug camps. There are full days of fun games, activities, adventures, and lots and lots of bug time. So it's $50, $45 for members. It's from 9 to 4, and it's for ages 5 to 11. Over at Mismo Gymnastics, they've got family fun time starting at 9.30. This is an open gym for ages walking to 12 years. 
And then over at Heritage Hall, they've got Friends of... Okay, so no, this is at the Historical Museum of Fort Missoula. They have their annual used book sale. That's going to be at Heritage Hall. It starts at 10 a.m. and it hap is happening all weekend long. Mandarin Starters is at the Children's Museum of Missoula. It starts at 11. And then over in the Lolo Community Center at American Legion Post 135, they've got a flag dedication slash a veteran appreciation. Um, and so that starts at 1 o'clock. And at Taste Buds Kitchen, there's a conference day battle cupcake camp, ages four and up. It uh, starts at one o'clock, it's $45. And then over at the Missoula Art Museum, we've got experimental drawing with Dennis Kern. That starts at two o'clock. And so this series is, this class is a series of drawing exercises and varied lighting conditions intended to develop a personal awareness that enhances practice of contour and gesture drawing. So it'll be from the November 11th to December 16th, $130 for non-members. It'll be from 2 to 4. No experience is necessary. And if you guys want to sign up for that, you can call 728-0447. Up next, we've got Missoula Family <laughs> YMCA, Missoula Family Fun Time. It starts at 3.30. Um, activities include a bounce houses, scoop ball, tumbling area, bucket stilts. Parents have really nice, comfy couches and chairs they can chill on. And then, you know, their kids just go crazy. Wear them out. Yeah. Oh, this next one is really cool. So over there with the Crystal Theater starting at 5 o'clock, in honor of Veterans Day, um, uh, filmmaker Andy Smetanka has an animated feature debut. It's called And We Were Young. And it's, about, and it's an oral history and silhouette of American doughboys in France in the final weeks of the Great War. Uh, shot over the course of three years, made entirely of Super 8 film and thousands of hand-cut paper figures, and sparsely narrated with only the words of the men who were there. So that'll be showing at 5, at 7, and at 9 o'clock at the Crystal Theater tonight. And it is $10 at the door. Over at Zootown Arts Community Center, starting at 5:30, they have got a uh, they've got a gallery student a gallery opening a gallery showing. So this is Elizabeth Giardino, Giardino, and what she is doing is she does scratch board. So it's a unique medium made from board which is coated with a thin layer of white of white clay and sprayed over the surface with black India ink, and you scratch into it and makes cool patterns. So this is what you guys could expect to see. So that's all ink, and then her just etching away. So that'll be at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center starting today. And that'll be there, I would think that it would be there for a month. Um, and then they also have another gallery opening, and that'll be also at the Zoo Town Arts Community Center at Stony Sasser's Gallery Opening. It starts at 5.30. And they investigate the interconnected, interconnectedness of humans, plants, animals, and the surrounding material culture and sprawling installations that climb the walls and creep along the floors. And you guys can see this, and this is what you can expect to see from there, a gallery showing. Both of these will be at the Zootown Arts Community Center tonight, starting at 5.30. And then we have got, okay, so the Senior Center is about to get crazy tonight. So they've got Starlighter Swing Band Dinner and Dance. Starting at 5.30, they've got a really fantastic dinner that you guys can have, along with dessert. And then there's music and dancing. So you can get out there, whip your sweetie around, or slowly move your sweetie around. Yeah, that sounds fun. And then, also at 5.30, also at the Zootown Arts Community Center, is their free silk screening night. Um, it goes to 5.30, 7.30, they ask for a donation, but in the, you don't, you know, donation only. Um, and then, yeah, you can leave one with one of their house prints and bring some of your own fabric. Over at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they go to ULA class. It starts at 5.30 until 7.30. It's only $11. And then at the Learning Center at Red Willow, there's a Reiki circle. It starts at 6.30. This is open to anyone who has had any level of Reiki training or hasn't had any experience but wants to know more. Um, and so that'll be from 6.30 to 9. And then over at Glacier Ice Rink, they've got a hockey game. It's Missoula Junior Bruins home game versus the Bozeman Ice Dogs. And I know that they did just get some awesome bleachers, so you guys can, like, relax on those. It's $10 for adults, $5 for military, <laughs> and seniors and kids are also $5. Doors open at 6.30, and the game starts at 7.30. Ooh, this next one is great. Okay. So at Monks, there's a rap show, and, but it's with Crazy Bone. And Crazy Bone is one of the original members of Bone Thugs and Harmony, who will be here next month with Snoop Dogg. Um, and so he's going to be playing at Monks at 8 o'clock. Crazy Bone will be featuring 
a uh, bunch of others of his homies, you know. Um, <laughs> um, Thug Line, let's see, Thug Line Records, Position, Keith G, Dorado, and Shift Changer. Those will all be like international and national performances coming with Crazy Bone. And then local performances will be with Levi Miller and Christian Twight, Deuces Foe, Flex Gang, and DJ Chunk Eye. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds super fun. <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> okay, at the University of Montana in the Part TV building um, in their open space, their bear bait dance presenting um, a show called An Attic and Exit. So it's at 8 o'clock. And so it is, yeah, so it's part of their 2016 guest performance residency. It looks like they have a gal there from Seattle that's helped them choreograph this show and is going to perform as well. So, upon entering, I'll read you guys the synopsis. Upon entering their world, Rachel and Leslie's movement becomes language, obj objects being characters, and everyday logic is suspended. So you guys can expect to see contemporary dance, visual art, fiction, aerial dance, and theater. This will happen all weekend long. So Friday it's at eight, November, uh, Saturday it's two and eight, and Sunday's at six. Oh, it's $14 in advance or $16 a day off. Um, and then we have a couple more events for Friday. We've got I Love the 90s Dance Party of the Badlander at 9. Cash or Junkers at the Union Club at 9.30. Shake Well Album Release Party with Cure for the Common at 9.30 at the Top Hat Lounge. And Pay Dirt will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30 as well. And so to break things up, and we've got an art clip. And it looks like that this one is in honor of our veterans. So happy Veterans Day, everyone, and enjoy this. All right, you guys, we are back and I've got some events for your Saturday. So this is what's happening on your Saturday. We're gonna start off our Saturday morning with a bunch of craft fairs. So over the Eagles at number 32, the Eagles Lodge, they've got a holiday craft bazaar starting at 9 a.m. And then as Scott has been telling us all week long, the Missoula Valley Winter Market is in full swing. So it's at 9 a.m. It'll be on the first floor of the Hellgate Elks Lodge um, located on Patty Street starting tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah and that'll go until one o'clock. So on here it says that the winter's market is marketing it market is focusing on fresh produce, farm direct products, baked goods, coffee and tea, quality arts and crafts. Yeah, so it'll be November twelfth to April twenty second, excluding December twenty fourth and December thirty first. Awesome. Um, and then the University of Montana has got an ultimate craft sale that starts at 9 o'clock. That'll be in the UC. And then at the Holiday Inn downtown at the park is Zoo City Craft Fair that starts at 10 a.m. And then the book sale is still happening over the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. Uh, Heritage Hall starts at 10 a.m., so that'll be happening all weekend, too. And then at Rook's Acro Sports Center, our trampoline jam starts at 10 a.m. This is a structured drop-in class that focuses on front and back flip progressions. It's for ages 5 to 12. And then over at Green Path Herb School, they've got Making Your Own Natural Body Care Workshop starting at 10 a.m. If you guys want to sign up for that, you can give 274-2009 a call. 
And then over at Living Art of Montana, we have a Saturday workshop, Wire Wonder with Beads. It starts at 1030. Um, and so it'll be a workshop working with beads and wires. Yeah, it's uh, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> over at the Missoula Art Museum. They've got a Saturday family art workshop that starts at 11. goes until 12.30. This is for the whole family, but it is limited to 15 participants, so they ask that you show up just a few minutes early to reserve a spot. Um, but this will be a symbol, uh, this class will be a symbolic self-portrait box sculpture with Katie Canyon. They'll be using small boxes, wire, thread, colored paper, and other objects. You'll create a textual, colorful sculpture that symbolically represents who you are. Oh, that sounds great. And then this next one is really nice and I think it's pretty uh, appropriate for Veterans Day, even though it is tomorrow. At the Learning Center at Red Willow, they've got a caregiving for veterans class starting at 1 o'clock. Um, and so this is from 1 to 5. It's free for caregivers, spousers, or partners of veterans. And what it is, is the workshop will provide a bridge of connect to caregivers, a bridge to connect caregivers of veterans to one another and provide education and tools to help with the individual caregivers feel more empowered and caring for their vet. So it's, you know, if your vet has got some, uh, have a difficult day and you don't really know how to help them, this class will give you the tools on how to do that. And so uh, that starts at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah. And then over at Peaceful Heart Yoga, they've got yoga for stress and anxiety. It starts at 1.30 and goes until 5. This is like a three and a half hour yoga class. But what it is, is yoga poses. They'll have breath work. They'll have mindfulness and meditation. They'll also have self-care, which is oil massage and essential oils. They'll also have food and relaxing approaches to food and centering environment and activities in your life. So an all-inclusive uh, three and a half hours. But if you guys want to reserve a spot or have questions, you can call 239-YOGA. Yoga. <laughs> at the Montana Natural History Center, they've got a track it out class. It starts at two o'clock. You can hone your skills as you study tracks and animal science. Um, and these activities will help you learn how to identify tracks by looking at stride strength, stride length, strata length, and gait patterns. Then over at DraftWorks Brewing Company, we've got Poor Henry. He'll be playing at 6. Uh, at Imagination Brewing Company, we have live music with Dan Henry. He'll be playing at 6. And then Andre Floyd will be playing at the Missoula Brewing Company, also at 6 o'clock. At the Crystal Theater, there's open country reading series, poetry. It starts at 7 o'clock. And then at the Missoula Children's Theater, they have a Missoula Medical Aid Salsa Ball and Fundraiser. Um, Missoula Medical Aid has provided support to areas of impoverished rural Honduras since 1998. So you can dance to Salsa Loca, enjoy delicious small bites, wine, and beer. Tickets are available, $50 per person or $25 if you're a student. At Har Shalom, they've got Dances of Universal Peace that starts at 7 o'clock. It's a dance that you don't really know. You don't have to have any experience to go to it. They'll teach you how to do the dance, and then you'll perform it and do it with other people. Um, it's a $5 to $10 suggested donation. And then we have got a play at the Crystal Theater. It's called Save the Country. It starts at 7 o'clock. And so it's a stage reading um, about the emotional triangle between Jeanette, Bell, and Wellington Rankin during the Rankin's 1914 Montana suffrage fight to her April 1917 no vote on World War I. <coughs> and then we've got some music happening for your Saturday. And so absolutely, with Chris Moon, we'll be at the Bad Lander at 9 o'clock. Uh, Rooster Sauce has their cassette release party at the Palace at 9. Pay Dirt at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. New Wave Time Trippers at the Top Hat Lounge also at 9.30. Zo Joan Zen will be at the Union Club at 9.30. And then there'll be a benefit show featuring the Casual Encounters at Old Vec Beck and VFW at 10 o'clock. And then my last event is Polyrhythmics will be at stage 112 at 10. So as always, you guys check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana, the Independent and the Missoulian for more events. I get all of my events from you from MissoulaEvents.net, and you guys can go on there to see what's happening on Sunday as well. We're switching gears now, and I know that Scott's got a whole lot of city council. Yes, I do have a whole lot of city council, and I am going to show you a Flex Your Friday video because I know that if I talk about... Um, City Council, I might not have enough, have enough time to do the Flagship Friday video of the week. So we'll clean your palate with this and then we'll come back to uh, some City Council.
I yes. love that incredibly angsty teen movie. That was hilarious. <laughs> teen, that's how I imagine just like teens go throughout their day. Just like, just mm-hmm. like super, like, yeah. just, they, they just wander, mm-hmm. like, you know, nothing's ever like happening or whatever. I'm pretty sure that's exactly <laughs> it. That's really funny. But of course, we have some city council reports, so let's get. Get to it. (laughs) Anyways, uh, so of course, there is a uh, resolution in solidarity with the indigenous residents of Dakota Access Pipeline. And of course, Heidi West, um, she's the one who uh, suggested the city of Missoula say like, hey, we want to send a referendum or uh, a proclamation saying that, hey, Missoula stands with, uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, uh, Standing Rock. Standing Rock. Yeah. So that's Missoula the that stand, stand with Standing Rock. Standing Rock. So yep. Missoula is standing with Standing Rock. The city council uh, decided to go forward with this, and they're going to put it up to the um, uh, for Monday's consent agenda, which will most likely be approved because it was pretty much approved unanimously at this meeting. But of course, here is Heidi West uh, talking a little bit more. Ooh, wait, that's not it. <laughs> that's not Heidi West. There's Heidi West <laughs> and giving an emotional um, speech about um, and, and also response to the election and how it affects the. Uh, the pipeline. This morning I woke up and uh, had to talk to my seven-year-old, eight-year-old, sorry, about uh, our presidential election. And I think it's more important than ever um, that we take a stand for indigenous rights, for um, protecting our environment, for protecting our water, um, and for uh, uh, protecting all people that are on in marginalized communities, whether it's folks that are um, in the LGBTQ community or uh, women <laughs> in general. Um, and I think this is one way that we as a community um, can strive forward and I think what we do very well and um, I think I just want to take a moment uh, to thank folks that are on council with me um, and that have been on council prior to this because I think that we do um, represent the wishes of the wishes and the, the values of our constituency, um, whether it's passing an anti-discrimination um, legislation in our community or potentially supporting this. So I hope we can talk about it and maybe get this move forward. All right. So, of course, um, a lot of the city council were definitely in support of this um, um, motion as well to move it to approval. And here is um, John Wilkins on this as well. You know, we've been t- told by the big oil companies that pipelines are safe and they'll never leak. And I think we can see right here in Montana where they're wrong and uh, they've polluted our rivers. So this is an important thing to show solidarity. Yep. And then the next quote is from, let's see. The next quote is from Gwen Jones, um, and this is what uh, she had to say. And she talks more about the uh, indigenous people in in Standing Rock. Um, in America, are sovereign nations? They are their own governmental entities, and it is still shocking to me that they aren't necessarily treated like that. The fact that the um, ap- applications for this pipeline went through without any consultation or permitting process through the Standing Rock Reservation is just appalling to me um, and shows that there is a lack of awareness of the status of Indian tribes, Native American tribes in America. Um, so I'm totally... All right, so um, she's definitely in support of this um, referendum as well. Um, continuing on, this is, of course, Missoula does pass this referral to the consent as a, consent agenda to represent the city of Missoula to stand with Standing Rock, and I think that, you know, it's great. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's a, it's an interesting thing happening that's going on here as well. Um, and also, uh, President-elect Donald Trump has a lot to gain from this pipeline, apparently, because I looked in the news just recently, and I saw that uh, in some way or some form is that Donald Trump is will make a quick will make a buck from this pipeline as well. <laughs> so I can see, especially with the um, um, Republican-controlled majority, there's a lot of tension 
especially in Standing Rock as well. Um, and you haven't heard too much reporting on Standing Rock. They're just kind of like, um, unless you look it up online. But of course, you can find out more information about what's going on with Standing Rock by basically doing a Google search of Standing Rock. Mm -hmm. it, there's a lot going on. And uh, you got to just keep an eye on it. There's just definitely a lot going on. Um, but of course, there's a bunch of uh, public comments saying that they really are, are are supportive of Missoula and they're really uh, impressed that Missoula is um, standing with Standing Rock. Okay, moving on, um, the jail diversion. So jail diversion, uh, they're doing a master plan update and a judge, um, Catherine Jenks, uh, from, uh, she's a judge from the municipal court, she's really kind of questioning um, the city council's uh, update. I still have some concerns about the data. I am concerned that the emphasis here is on nonviolent offenses rather than risk-based offenses. And that's a concern that I have with specifically with regard to DUIs, but also with regard to a lot of other offenses that we get which are considered nonviolent that are actually quite violent in their circumstances. All right, so of course, um, she, I mean, there's more of the quote, but I'm gonna explain what basically she said, is that um, she is concerned primarily because uh, jail is the, is, uh, is the threat, the threat of jail, but with jail diversion programs, it kind of allows people who are being threatened with jail to not to go to jail, mm, so, yeah. and so a lot of ways, they're not afraid of not going to jail. So a lot yep. of times, a lot of times they repeat their crimes. That makes total sense. So that's kind of what, what her main concern was for this, of course. Um, of course, Marilyn Marler talks on this, and she does. She, talk, she takes it from a standing point, not necessarily about the concerns that she may have, but this is uh, basically what the update really means. I think that, like some other issues that we've had in city council recently, I can't remember which one, but. Um, Fre frequently we have these things come in that like master plans um, or resolutions and the the target or the audience of it is not necessarily the person who is the absolute expert or the implementer of those things it's for us all to be able to talk to each other this is a city county master plan so that we have some um, some ideas and concepts to discuss with other elected people so we can make budget recommendations. So basically uh, what Marilyn Marler says, this is a master plan, not a master suggestion or a master, um, you know, I guess, yeah, that's basically the best way yeah. of describing it. Like I, I'm trying to re-describe re it, but basically a master plan is basically for the primarily the, what the, <laughs> back to the start, let's, let's I think, let, I think... let, let me begin the sentence again. What they're trying to do is this for data collection, see what works with the jail diversion program and what doesn't. And this is what the master plan update is trying to do. Uh, Brian, Brian Von Losberg, uh, this is what he has to say in response to this and also um, um, tailing along along with Marilyn Marler. I intend to support it. It, 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 it. You know, I am sure that it is flawed. Uh, there isn't a plan that exists that, that isn't. But it's been a really important tool for, for me and I think the community to even grapple with these sorts of issues. The, the beds and the, the drop-in shelter issue is hugely important. I tend to make it a priority over the, the rest of my time on council and you know, the discussion of it here uh, is important and I'd, I'd hate to see uh, us throw away the entire plan. Um, you know, because it's it's not perfect. Um, All right, so of course, um, he does support this plan because um, this is just another step moving forward. This is an update of an already existing master plan that they want to put into wording, especially with jail diversion. Uh, this next quote is John Wilkins, who is completely against this because he thinks that um, what, what a lot of programs are already doing are helping this as well. And um, as the update goes underway, the city talks about better communication and data um, collection on what programs work and which, um, which ones do not. And of course, like I said last week, when I was suggesting an umbrella kind of like uh, entity to uh, oversee these programs in a way. So it's just like they all communicate with one another. And um, most, of the pe most of the time people don't take advantage of a lot of these jail diversion programs because they don't want to. That's usually why they don't do jail diversion is because people who are in jail don't 
try to do these things. It, I mean, it's interesting because I there was a there's a quote um, Judge Jenks says later in the thing. But of course, I want to start off with John Wilkins, who is not in support of this, and of course, he can't. Um, he he has to abstain from voting because his uh, wife works within the jail system. So you actually know what the heck you're doing. Uh, it also does not talk about things that we already do that the city's paying for and the county's paying for. And, uh, you know, if anything, I thought maybe the plan would say, well, we need to expand them or get rid of them. Or, and it doesn't say, it doesn't even mention that. So that is a little disturbing to me, which is good to me, is what they talk about the mental health issue. That's an important issue that we are not doing our due diligence on it. Uh, there are some good things in the plan, but I think some of the stuff that I talked about might outweigh the good things. So I, I'm really undecided whether to go for this. What I'd really like to see is the plan go back and correct the data and put some other things in it. and. That's what I'd like to see. All right. So that's um, John Wilkins' response to this. It's it's pretty much unclear. There still has a lot to talk about. And, of course, uh, Judge Jenks definitely has a lot of um, um, information and, of course, a firsthand experience about, you know, because she sends the people. She sends a lot of people to jail in the yeah. first place. So, um, <laughs> of course, she tells the city why most people that are in jail uh, basically um, go to jail in a way. So she kind of explains that a little more. People who are in jail right now are not in jail because they're not paying fines. I, although I hate that to get around, I don't actually do that. So, <laughs> um, but um, you know, the primary reason that people are in jail is either they're not complying with the treatment programs, anger management, and ACT, or they're not coming to court. And the non-appearance issue is huge. I mean, that's easily the biggest reason that I think, and I don't have data for that. I, anecdotally, I am pretty confident that the reason for most of the people sitting in jail for municipal court is failure to appear. All right, so in a way, um, people go to jail because they are lazy yeah. because they don't go to court and they don't defend themselves like oh it'll handle itself and then they just go to jail because <laughs> <laughs> they just get a warrant out for their arrest it's like uh, I know a friend of mine who uh, didn't pay a parking or like a speeding ticket for a while and she had a warrant out for her arrest because yep. she didn't show up yeah that's why you go to jail so yes. um, if you get a ticket you gotta pay ticket seriously um, but of course and if you can't pay the fee they have payment plans so you you can't you don't have to pay it all at once yeah. that, that's the common misconception because um, the biggest issue that I've had with the court system is because I parked ah. and I got towed and it was just like you can't park there and it's like okay I won't park there again it's like now I'll pay you guys five hundred dollars yeah exactly it's ridiculous yeah. and then you get not the, and the towing time. costs it's ridiculous. So I agree. If you get towed, you have to pay the towing costs, mm -hmm. and if it's a illegal parking, mm -hmm. then you have to pay the court costs. I, it's so it's ridiculous. But of course, that uh, concludes of uh, that segment. But of course, I don't have any more quotes from um, any of the other meetings. Public Works, the city will pay an asset acquisition of of one point three million dollars to uh, that expects to undertake. Um, this is when they're purchasing Echo Compost. So Echo Compost, which is just out by a Walmart, they're going to purchase it for $1.3 million. And then the um, service is going to be undertaking, It's because they're going to update it and just kind of like revamp it in their way. It's going to be 332738 for improvements. Um, parks and Conservation, and of course with all sorts of rain. Okay, so this is a area interesting because um, I do have... Oh, darn it. Crap. I had pictures of, of, like, they wanted to extend the trail a little bit. And one of the things uh, that they had to deal with, you know, like, uh, okay, so, yeah, that's not going to work. Um, so I would have showed you guys the pictures, but uh, I guess the biggest news story is, um, you know, the you know the Tiger Grant Trail, you know, the one that connects Hamilton to Missoula. They're... Uh, 
They tried to do it from Missoula to Bonner, mm-hmm. and they're trying to extend the Kim Williams Trail. Oh, and they're cool. trying to do it underneath the I-90 bridge just before you go over like Bonner and that area. Ooh. There's that one, the first bridge just after outside of East Missoula. Yeah. They try to make like an underpass underneath the bridge, but they found out that the soil is not good enough. Oh, the soil is too loose and it's too dangerous, so they're gonna have to um, start start over again, basically. Shoot. Yeah, so that's well, basically what's happening with that. Good um, luck. <laughs> and I want to spend the last like minute or so on the land use and planning. And of course, as you may think, Missoula isn't uh, already getting a large building in the middle of town. The Fox Triangle and the city of Missoula are coming up with a, de- a de- development agreement with the CTA. This was a informational item that won't affect Missoula in the short term, but they're really talking about it, what they're going to do with the Fox Triangle. And of course, I talked about it earlier in the show. It's that one section just right next to the Orange Street Bridge. Um, after watching the meeting, it's clear that the city of Missoula is excited for this new commercial apartment and business uh, mixture building. It's going to be, I think it's going to be more like a mini uptown, downtown area. It's like a little square of residential cafes things in that you know it's better than a vacant lot i suppose it's true. Uh, <laughs> better than nothing um <laughs> it's 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 like a small town in the middle of the square the big issue that the city is looking at is the parking issue and of course with any new buildings it's like you're just building a bunch of new buildings but nobody can go there because there's nowhere to park um so of course that's one of the issues that they talked about and if, if you haven't been in the area it's it's kind of barren it's, it's, it's open area, um, a lot of parking is shifted from the hospital, so they might tear down that um, parking, um, little mini parking complex that's right next to the clinics of where the hospital is. So that's what's going on with that. Um, if you guys want more information, you can go into ci.missoula.mt.us to find out more information about your local government and more of what's going on, just what the heck is going on in Missoula. And this it's is basically, always, I just told you what's going on in Missoula. It's good to stay updated. It's good to be informed so that you actually know what you're talking about when other people don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. But yeah. if you want to know even more stuff about Wake Up Missoula and beyond, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also like us on our Facebook page. We post every video that we've shown you guys in Secession. Um, you can also uh, follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us on there, MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on our Facebook page, and to find out more information or to watch us live online, just go to MCAT.org. Okay, so we uh, about filled the whole hour full of content. I want to thank um, Chris Hahn once again, the uh, professor of piano from the University of Montana. Go see his concert. It's next Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. at the Denison Theater. It's uh, American Piano Quartet, and it's um, great uh, pianists from all around playing piano for you guys, and you know, you gotta celebrate piano. So, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. And for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noelle McFoy. We will see you guys all on Monday. Have a great weekend.